Hello everyone! Welcome to another watercolor tutorial. We are doing a fall themed painting today and I love, I love the fall. Um, that entire mood, all the colors of the trees turning. It's, it's just a beautiful time and because I'm bulk painting October's tutorials today in June, <laughs> I, oh no, today is July 1st. Today is Canada Day. Um, but it's hard to get in the mood when I'm not even harvesting things from my garden yet. It's just a funny, funny thing. But, you know, we have to do what we have to do. I am going to be, when you see this, uh, I'm going to be a pretty fresh mom and... Fingers crossed, everything goes well, but yeah. I have to bulk paint so that I don't get overwhelmed uh, during that time of my life. So we are painting, I don't even know if I said this already, but we're painting a fall themed cabin. So I'm starting out with my background. It's going to be a gray sky. I've done enough blue skies honestly to last me forever so I just wanted to change it up with a gray sky this time and so about halfway about here actually I'm just gonna keep going with this gray technically you don't have to because like this whole middle part will be covered by trees but I'm just gonna keep going to be consistent uh, and I'm using, I don't even know the names of these colors, but I'm using a gray and kind of like a bluish gray, but any gray will do. Watered down black will do. It, uh, it doesn't matter too, too much because most of this is going to be covered anyways. So once you have that nice wash across your whole page um, we want to think ahead with this because I'm trying to save time not because I'm in a rush particularly at this moment but you know I tend to do more layers than are necessary in a painting um, I really should have thought of this before. So half of this painting, like this from the horizon onwards, it's gonna be like a river bank and there's gonna be a cabin on it with these beautiful trees, fall trees in the background. And there's gonna be a very heavy reflection. Oh, and this is inspired by my magic brush gallery, by the way, just in case I forgot to mention that. So I am going to grab yellow And about while your painting is still wet, about halfway down, I'm going to paint over the gray with the yellow. And unfortunately, my yellow had some green in it. Um, so you have to have the foresight <clears throat> to imagine what your trees are going to roughly look like. So it'll kind of fade off like that, I hope. It'll be something like that. And we want to make the top a little bit darker uh, because the, uh, I don't know if this is actually true or not, so I might just be spewing lies here, but the closer that something is to the horizon or to the riverbank, the more intense the colors will be or the clearer the image will be. So I've taken some orange that I just want to add to that top portion. And then we also want to add brown um, 
because our cabin is going to be brown. So just something like that. So again, you kind of have to have the foresight as to where things are going to be located, roughly. Um, I am going to take a little bit of black, because now that I'm looking at this, <clears throat> it's much darker along the horizon. So again, you want to be doing this while it is still wet. So I know right now this looks like a big blob of nothing and I'm noticing here that my painting is starting to cauliflower, uh, which is not good because we're not painting anything over top here. So I don't know what that's gonna look like and I don't want to try and fix that. Um, let's hope that that's not noticeable. If anything, we can address that at the end and paint something in the foreground. But, I mean, it is what it is. So, I think we will just leave this for now the way that it is. I mean, I'll let this totally dry before we um, move on to the next step. Okay, there we go. That should be dry. I hope it is. Um, once again, I am trying to think of how I'm going to paint this. We can go about it two ways. We can either paint the trees first and then the cabin over top, or we can paint the cabin and the trees around it. Um, but I think it will be easier to just do the trees one layer at a time let's not speed things up too too much so um okay i'm picking up <clears throat> yellow and i've got so many different shades of yellow here that i don't think it really matters what yellow that you use for this because we're going to be adding like oranges and browns anyways to darken it to make it look a little more diverse in color. So about halfway down is where you're going to start these, this tree line. And I'm realizing I should have had my dark, darker area a little bit lower. But uh, let's see what we can do. Because that's not really halfway down. But, oh well. So I'm just creating my horizon line with my yellow going right across my page like that. And honestly, it doesn't matter because we're going to be painting green over it, I believe. Um, but basically, you can just kind of fill this portion in a little bit. Like this because we're not going to get, we're, we're only going to start with the details momentarily. So I am switching to my size one, just like a smaller brush so that you can kind of do this dabbing. I mean, a bigger brush will work too, but I feel like I have more control with a smaller brush with tree top, deciduous treetop details. So I'm going to have it come in like this, kind of in an arch. So here is going to be the tippity top of some of my trees. So I'm just very lightly dabbing my paintbrush, trying to create that deciduous tree look. So and I'm <clears throat> intentionally leaving some gray, like some negative space there. Probably we'll fill that in later, but uh, maybe with different colors, we'll see. So this part shouldn't take you too, too long. It's just a quick 
little dabble. You're adding some texture to the tops of your deciduous trees. Oh, I love this time of year. I hope that I'm well enough to go out and explore because this baby is due very close to our, a week from our wedding anniversary. It'll be our two year wedding anniversary. And it's a month away from our dating anniversary. So this year, my husband and I will have been together for seven years. That is really crazy to think about. I It's very hard to, to just think about the fact that we've been together that long and, and that we're still really happy. Things have not faded, luckily. Um, so what was my point? Oh, yes. My point is that we typically go on like a, an anniversary trip, a uh, canoe trip, just a local one, usually just somewhere in one of the provincial parks. We'll just take the canoe and we don't even have a plan. We just kind of take the canoe somewhere and hope that we find a nice island to camp on and so far it's always been such a beautiful time to go because all the colors are changing it's like a really nice temperature when we wake up super early in the morning you can see the mist it's just really really gorgeous um okay so you want to work i was working pretty slowly there but uh this should still be wet because you want to start adding some color. So orange or brown or, you know, something other than yellow. And it doesn't have to be as plentiful as mine is. It just, you know, add a splash of color here and there so it's not just all yellow. I think it'll look nicer if there's a bit of color, but it's your painting. You do whatever you want. I'm going to add brown as well because it's a nice complement to the yellow and it almost looks like it's just shadow shadows coming from the trees or like the sun filtering through or something like that. So yes, I hope that I am well enough by that time that we can still go. Well, I don't know how that's even going to be possible because I'm going to have an infant, a newborn. So unless we want to take her out I guess when you see this, it'll, the news will be out because we aren't really telling anybody the um, gender. We're keeping that to ourselves, but I mean, the news will already be out by the time that this video is out. So that's why I am saying that it is a girl and we are very, 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 very excited. We both wanted a girl. Um, so it's just going to be so fun seeing my husband as a dad to a girl. He's very cute. He already says very adorable things. Like, I can't wait to have two cheeks to kiss in the morning and it's adorable okay uh i i keep kind of adding black but it's not really showing through because i'm hesitant to go too dark with that but 
Anyway, you get the gist. You're just adding oranges and browns and whatnot to add a little bit of texture or color or value, whatever the heck you want it to be. You're just adding that. And in a moment, we're gonna be adding very thin black lines once this dries to um, uh, as tree trunks. So it doesn't just look like there's a wall of yellow and orange. So, just debating here how we're going to do this because there needs to be <clears throat> a river bank of sorts and I'm realizing now that our first layer here was <clears throat> really way too light like it's it just looks very washed out so I'm going to be adding why don't we just do it now because it's our it's this bottom half is dry anyway so um, let's reflect some beautiful yellow colors I just added some of that original gray that I used for the sky. I still had it on my palette, so I just put that at the bottom. And I'm glad I did, because that looks much nicer. <laughs> and then I'm taking that darker color. Doing, basically, I'm just repeating what I did the first time. Just don't want to overdo it too much with that uh, color, but I do want to add enough black. It's tricky. But that'll be good, I think. We'll see. We'll see. So. I'm going to let this dry completely because next we're going to paint our little river bank and then the cabin maybe at the same time as that, okay? So I'm hoping that this is dry enough. Uh, okay. I'm always like, oh, I really should have thought of this before I turn the camera on so that I'm not wasting your time. Because a lot of the times when I have a reference photo that I'm looking at, that's all it is, right? So I have no idea what the original artist process was of painting it. And half the time it ends up evolving into a painting that doesn't even look remotely similar to the reference. Um, so I'm like, okay, how should I tackle it? What should I do next? And I'm th thinking I this brush might be a little too small. All right, it would be fine, but it would just take forever. So I'm picking up uh, green. <sighs> could be kind of like a lighter green because we are going to be adding black and you can always darken it but it's harder to lighten watercolor so start with something lighter if you don't have a light green just add a bunch of white if you don't have that that's fine use whatever green you have um now i'm going to unfortunately i have this very distinct line here um so we kind of have to accommodate for that so I'm just going to roughly kind of paint 
just above it like that. And then taking a very dark green or black or whatnot and I'm basically painting like a straight, it doesn't have to be super straight since it's a riverbank. Um, although that looks a bit funny. Something like that. And I'm going to actually switch to my size one again and just try to add some of that greenish color back in and make it more look more shrubbery because right now it looks too straight for my liking. I do want that to be much darker than it is. I'm just trying to, oh, I don't like that at all. Trying to play around with the greens that I have here to have something that I like. I know that that is extremely vague. I know wish I didn't add whatever the heck that is supposed to be because it does not look very natural in my painting at all. Um, in fact, I am tempted to do the bottom once again, which I'm going to do. So I'm redoing the reflection again. Okay, we're gonna, oh, uh, our power just went out. <laughs> okay, so welcome back. Well, for you guys, this is just a continuation of the video, but in reality, the power just went out for over two hours, which really threw a wrench in the works. Is that the saying for me? Um, I don't really know how to paint this cabin now. I should have I should have thought about that instead of Oh well. <laughs> so let's paint a square and see what happens. So in reality, I could have continued painting um because, you know, my phone is charged and whatnot but it's just the lights went out and I paint in my bathroom because the lights are consistent and the best and for that reason I could not continue painting unfortunately otherwise it would have been a perfect if I was not painting to film a tutorial where I don't need optimum light I could have kept painting but instead I was forced to play a game with my husband a board game that he bought and we've I have been putting it off because 
um, it seemed like a very complicated game. It's called Castles of Burgundy. I don't know if anybody else has played that game, but uh, we really liked playing Catan, and so he bought that game thinking it would be like a similar type thing. And um, the first time we tried playing it, I didn't feel real like I was not in the mood at all. And he spent an hour reading the instructions while I was just sitting there waiting. So that really deterred me. But now we we're like, okay, there's nothing else to do since the power's out. So we might as well give this game a try. So I reluctantly sat there. But you know, it ended up being like we got the hang of it after an hour and a half. Um, so it wasn't too bad. But anyways, I hope you're following along with the rough shape here of this cabin. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Now I'm painting a parallelogram for the roof in a more reddish color. Um, Uh, I kind of overextended the roof a little bit too much. This does not look like a parallelogram. I'm going to have to make I'm going to have to make the cabin a bit bigger. Oh, I have a call. I just missed a call from Hydro. I hope that was not anything important. Okay. I'm going to add, ooh, that's too much darkness. I am going to add a little bit of black because I want to make it look like there is like a shadow or a, uh, the roof is overhanging and so it's casting a shadow on this part, but it's a tad bit wet. This cabin, first of all, is way bigger than I was intending and second of all, the shadow for it does not correspond here. Um, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You can cry. That's what I do sometimes. Let me see if I can just add some red and then add... I will adjust that. No, I should adjust it now before it dries. So I want to add that darkness here that I was talking about. Anyway, I told my husband that, okay, we'll play this board game, but as soon as the power goes on, comes back on, I am going painting no matter where we are in this game. And so now he's really disappointed because we were finally getting the hang of it. And I'm like, nope. 
but we left it on the table so we'll just we'll continue it we'll continue it tomorrow but I just really you know like I have my whole painting set up with the intention of painting a lot of tutorials and as I've mentioned in more tutorials than I can count at this point I paint in my bathroom so I I can't just leave my painting set up the way it is and continue on with my day. I uh, like it's the bathroom and it's the only bathroom and it's a tiny bathroom so I'm either painting or I have to clean it up cuz someone either needs to use the toilet or needs to take a shower or you know it's not exactly the most ideal situation but you guys get your tutorials. I'm gonna just zoom in a bit. Okay. What is the next step, my friends? This cabin needs to dry a little bit. I'm really not happy with the water. I'm gonna be honest. The reflection, it just... Eh, I don't know. I might go over it a third time or fourth. I don't even know what number we're at this at this point. But before I make that decision, I am going to um, add those tree trunks that I was talking about earlier. So we're using brown for those. You can add a little bit of black to darken it a tad. Because the brown I have is it's not very it's it's it needs to be darkened and you can add your tree trunks and you know I wouldn't go like just straight up because you want it to kind of look like part of it is hidden amongst the leaves and whatnot so you can have like random branches poking out in different areas if that makes sense. So you can add those wherever you'd like, however many you'd like. So I was, I was talking to my husband like, oh, I was saying that I'm excited that I'm already painting October's tutorials and that I should be done October, uh, I keep get, sorry, I keep getting distracted. I'm getting text messages from my hydro company or my power company for non-Canadians. I don't, for, we call it hydro, and I think that's because our electricity is powered by hydro dams, because we have a lot of those. I think, don't quote me on that, but I keep getting text messages and getting distracted. Shoot, what was I saying? Oh, that I was telling my husband that I'm really excited that I'm already on October with my tutorials, and I was like, oh, so, so then I'll only have November and December. And once I'm done those, like, I'll have so much more free time to do, like, homesteading stuff, preserving and whatnot. And he was like, yeah, no, you're going to find a million other things to do. And that's so true. That happens every time I say that. Um, I'm like, oh, August will be a time where I can just relax and enjoy the last month of pregnancy but I know that it's just going to be hustle 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 so I am adding shading again to the underside of my cabin here And 
This red roof, as nice as it is, it's very undefined. Anyways, I think that's fine. We can add some windows and whatnot later, but right now this bottom portion is just looking really bare to me and I just don't want to add another layer since this isn't wet anymore and it'll just be it'll look off and so I'm tempted to just add ripples or um, just some sort of texture because this this does it doesn't look like water maybe Let's try adding white. I'm gonna take white watercolor here. You can certainly use acrylic, um, but my white in this new palette that I'm using, which is linked in the description, is very opaque. And so it'll, you can really see, like it's almost as opaque, if not as opaque as my cheap dollar store acrylic paint. So if that tells you anything about the quality of this, um, of these watercolors, that the white is opaque enough to, to show through, that that's pretty good in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know if that looks good. Trying to make these a lot thinner than I've been painting them, but it's a bit challenging to do that. Um, all right, we need to add something in this foreground because this looks really um, bare and totally not how I was intending. But I think we need to add the details of our cabin first because if it you know, overlaps with the cabin, then that'll defeat that purpose. So I'm gonna grab that white, white watercolor, sorry. And I'm going to add the windows and the doors, but first I'm going to let this totally dry so that the details of the windows and doors don't go everywhere. Okay, I hope that's dry. So, I am going to paint a door here. With my white watercolor. I'm gonna probably fill these in with either black or yellow if I want it to look like there's something inside, like a light is on inside. But you wanna add your windows as well here and here. And then you can add You can just add as many windows as you'd like. You don't have to put any windows on the side if you don't want to. I am going to add, I think, I don't know, let's see what yellow looks like and if it doesn't look good I can always paint over it. Yeah, I don't think I like that. Oh, I don't know. Let's see what black looks like.
Yikes, I really messed that one up. That was really poor control. I'm not being very precise because this tutorial is already very long and I feel like we're not getting very much out of it, out of that length. So that's why I'm trying to wrap this up a little bit quicker because we still have a lot to figure out in the foreground. So I have September's tutorials all edited and ready to be uploaded, but I'm going to wait until I go to the city next week and I'm just going to, because I have a, an appointment and I have to go with my husband because we share a car. So I have to spend the whole day in the city and uh, I, I typically go to the library and I use their Wi-Fi and what would take me literally a week of non-stop uploading, I can upload in an hour there. So I'm gonna do that for both September and October's tutorials. Anyway, I'm gonna zoom that out. We're gonna just keep it this, I'm, I'm tempted just to keep it the way it is for now. Taking white watercolor and I'm gonna very carefully just add like a highlight there, down there, just to define the corners of the house a little bit because it was looking a little undefined one would say i think that looks a lot it even looks like a kind of like a house now i like that a lot okay great so because this doesn't really look like water i am now tempted to add like a pathway or something <laughs> leading up to it uh i wish i could add ask for live feedback about that just like a driveway or something coming up like this. What do you guys think? Well, I guess you can't really tell me what you think. Um, it just wouldn't make sense because there's a shadow of this house if I add a driveway. I'm still gonna add this driveway. I might seriously regret this decision. Uh, so that's why I'm gonna start with gray. Because if I don't like it, we can, we probably can't do anything about it, but. So this driveway is going to go like this. Actually, it's going to go like this. Someone's probably going to be like, wow, you have a floating driveway. Actually, so on the way to the city from where we live, because we live quite rurally, um, there is this, I, I don't, I think it used, it must be a cottage road that is only accessible or someone only drives there. They're in the summer but clearly they haven't been there in a long time because 
the water from either side of this road has flooded the road. So there's a lake around this road and I guess they haven't been maintaining the road so the road has just been sinking. Uh, and the lake is now running across the road. So you, you physic, I don't know, maybe with a four by four with really high tires, you could probably cross it, but I would be nervous that because that road has been submerged underwater for so long that you would just like sink right, right into the lake. Um, so it does exist. I really like that. I'm glad I did that. And I like the gray too, actually. I think I might keep that. I'm just gonna use this. I'm only using blue because it's already on my palette for some reason from a, probably from a previous tutorial. But I'm just adding some like shadowy features and some sections because that felt right to do. All right. Okay, that is that is a good decision. What, what do you guys think about that? I am still gonna add something here in the foreground because it's still looking like there's not a lot going on here. So I am going to add a giant tree, a deciduous tree. Uh, so I'm gonna take black and I am going to take brown And we're gonna paint this tree. That is going to just be growing towards the sky. It's overlapping with our house a little bit. But I'm gonna have a branch. Coming off here, maybe another one here. So it's a lot easier when you use a thicker brush to get the, uh, the rough shape down first, and then you can go in with a thinner brush and start adding the little offshoots of branches. Like this. It's really quiet in the house. And the last I heard from my husband was that he was like, if you don't want to play with me, then I'm going to go talk to my real friends. <laughs> I think he went to the chickens. And I wonder if he let them out of the pen again, because we did that today for an hour, but we, we really have to watch them when we let them out because these aren't very intelligent chickens. And the last time we did that, one of them didn't come back um, to the coop at night and we found her in the neighbor's boat the next morning. So, you know, gotta be careful in that regard with, with these chickens. But I would not be surprised if he is just watching them free range right now. I really like how this turned out. It looks basically nothing like the reference, which is actually, I would say, a good thing. I like when my paintings turn out totally differently and unique and whatnot. Um, I'm even going to be daring here. And I'm using my size one to add some leaves. Although I don't want to do too much of that because leaves can be tricky, you know? Oh, 
and see because I did it there I now have to do it there and I don't want to because it doesn't look that good but commit commit Julia What, what if we added a falling leaf? Like a little... I hope that that is obviously a leaf to people. Whoops. And if we take white, we might even be able to add, no. I was gonna add like a wind mark of it falling, but I don't really like how that turned out, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't want to make these leaves look too perfect. They kind of look like flat bananas. Maybe one more here. And uh, I think we're gonna call it quits on this. It still looks like something is missing to me, but we're way too far into this tutorial, so. You guys can add whatever your heart desires. I'm gonna stop here. We can peel our tape off when we're finished to reveal a very nice fall painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and I will see you in the next tutorial.